Hello everybody, I hope you're doing really really well. So um, completely unexpected this video, I didn't intend to do it, but this is what life does. So this weekend for me involved um, some work in the garden. Good tidy up, get things organised, that meant a trip down to the dump and getting rid of some garden waste. When I was there, I found this drawer. Unfortunately there was a few others which had been thrown into the skip that I couldn't get access to. But straight away I saw this one and I thought, why don't I see more of these kind of drawers? You know, this one is made anywhere between probably the 1940s and 1960s, I guess. It's mass manufactured, but it's made in the same way as high quality drawers were from the 18th century. And I'm curious to know why we don't adopt those or why don't we, we don't see those methods promoted quite so much um, today because they are pretty quick and pretty, pretty easy. So what we'll do is a quick tour around the drawer. So the basic stuff we're all familiar with is half lap dovetails in the front. And there are definite gauge lines in there telling me that that was hand cut joinery. At the back here, we can also see we've got our dovetails in. And you'll notice also that there's quite an aggressive chamfer here. So you can imagine when you come to introduce that draw into the reveal, it goes in nice and easy. There's no point having a harsh edge here because then sliding in the drawers just means you risk damaging the face of your cabinetry. So having that chamfer is clever and it's suitable. Again, a relief there, completely sensible to do that, and a relief underneath. So when you come to put that in or a client comes to put that into the reveal, it's as easy as can be. The back step down and it's rounded over across the top and then the back as in with most good practice the back runs here and it's fixed in the back just by one screw because it's contained in the grooves so that's all pretty normal stuff again we've got our dovetails here and here you can see the quite substantial overcutting with the dovetail saw but that wouldn't have mattered one bit because your average client buying mass manufactured furniture whether it was now whether it was during the 50s and 60s or whether it was vernacular furniture of an earlier time that's just the way it was so that's pretty straightforward now when we look at the drawer from the top we can notice here that these drawer sides if we're paying attention look a little bit different to what most people kind of promote for drawer stock these days I find these drawers much more attractive. They are about eight millimeters thick. Most often I see people suggesting 12 mil and just put a groove straight into that 12 mil side. So what's different about these? Have they just put a groove in the side? Well absolutely not. So if I can hold this up and you can look in, you can see down in the corner here that there's not a sharp right angle here, there's just a quadrant shape just down in that corner. And we know the thickness of the top there, we know that it's about eight millimetres. But when we flip the drawer over, we can see that actually the total bearing surface is twice as much. It's about 16 millimetres. So what they've used here is something called drawer slips. Now, I did a little sketch that'll hopefully explain that a little bit more easily. Now here on this side, with the 12 millimeter side, you can see what's most common these days, you'll see a, a draw side of 12 millimeters, and that's probably the maximum you want to go to if you want something that's visually pleasing. Think about underneath there, you've only got a 12 mil bearing area. If you're using a soft timber, because you want maybe stability and you're using one of the softer pines, that area is gonna wear quite easily. Now this one, you could use eight millimeter or even a quarter inch on small drawers. Then you apply your slip to the bottom and you make lots of bearing area. And say you want to use pine for your drawer sides, we'll go ahead and then you can go and make some oak drawer slips. And that oak is gonna be much more wear resistant than the pine. It simplifies your construction because you don't have to put grooves in these sides. The only groove in this drawer construction is in the front of the drawer, where the back slides in into that groove and is then fastened here with one screw. 
We've got the Muntin as well because unfortunately being mass manufactured furniture um, it's got very thin plywood in there. Probably only about maybe four mil. It's quite thin and you've got a Muntin with a groove there to try and cut the amount of downward pressure but you can see here that either these drawers were stuffed full of too much weight or whatever or whether that plywood was just a bit too thin or it distorted so it started to rub or something got trapped same there started to rub and was getting damaged over time so really great way to make drawers so why don't we see it i mean it's not it's not new stuff it's not rough work using drawer slips was you know the soup du jour of the 18th century that's how you would do it and I just, I don't get it really. And a few other things to think about. It's a good lesson, even though this drawer is from a dump. Even though this has plywood in the base, it's been constructed in such a way that if a base were to get damaged, you could take that out and you could replace it. Perfect. If you ever make a drawer, never make the mistake of making it like a panel construction, especially if it's got a solid timber base. You know, number one, you'd have to use relatively thick sides with relatively deep grooves to compensate for the seasonal movement. Say if you did only something and it was a reasonable size drawer and you only had maybe three mil deep grooves, well, that's just not gonna work. It's a risky thing to do, especially if you're working hard to create a nice quality product. Sure, if you're making small boxes, some little bits and pieces that fit into a bureau or, you know, but for the main drawers, give drawer slips a try. Now, certain times drawer slips might look a bit funny would be on if you're doing some kind of vernacular work where you're kind of recreating something off of a basic dresser. A lot of early drawers simply had boards that were nailed front to back, like floorboards with nails, all in there just to hold it all together. Now, if you make an 18th century high furniture style drawer in that setting, it's going to look a bit hokey pokey. But, you know, give it some thought. I don't know why drawer slips aren't more popular. And um, yeah, on a side note, it was a positive trip to the dump as well. I got two nice kind of coffee table books about motorcycle road racing, 50p each, total win. And I really wasn't planning on doing that. So, um, yeah, it's given a good opportunity to do a video. So there we go. You can see a drawer slip. And these drawer slips, there's various ones that you can do. Um, you can have them with lots of different shapes. You, you can do any profile you want. You can even do a flush one. If I just maybe quickly sketch that one out. I used a ruler on the first ones and everything. Not a particularly good one there, but you can kind of see that if you don't want that curve in there, you can make up something which you just got a groove and then you could strike a bead on there if you wanted to. And, you know, it creates just that shadow bead running front to back. I've seen those on a couple of jobs. But yeah, give, give draw slips a try. And I think what could speed up draw production for you is, it could be one of those stock items that you just have on the shelf. You know, why not have some standard drawer slips that you always use, whether you use machines or hand tools, whatever your flavour is. You can just have them on a shelf and think, wow, all I've got to do is glue and pin those on. And just to reassure you, you might think, oh, God, that sounds a bit rubbish. Glue and pin on this. Isn't it better to work it in a solid? Well, you think about how a drawer works. You know, the pressure is always down and it's always supported underneath. It's always rubbing there. I've seen drawers fail because of well, we've had too much load put in here and it's rubbing on something or people have dipped them to remove the finish and the joints have fallen apart but I've never seen slips just fall off you might have I haven't so um yeah there we go ultimate drawer construction 18th century style right up to the mid 20th century and if you want to make good drawers think about doing them that way